Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another edition of my reread project. This is where I read five star books from the past and I see if they're still five star books to me. So just to refresh your memory a little, these are all books that I have read over a year ago and books that I've never done a reread of before. So I've just kind of gone back and picked some out and this month for February I chose Black Buck by Matteo Escaripor. Now this is a book that I read in the very beginning of January in 2021, which really is longer I think than a lot of the books that are going to end up being on this list. So that is kind of wild. It's been a very long time, but I really did enjoy this a lot. It was definitely something that I heard of and was immediately drawn into the premise. So Let's go ahead and see what I said about this the first time I read it. Normally I would give a synopsis, but I honestly, in my review, I wrote a synopsis that I think is better than anything I can talk through right now, so I am just going to read that. Black Buck is the story of Darren Vender, a Starbucks shift supervisor who is perfectly content with his average life. When one of his Starbucks regulars comes in and Darren decides to make an uncharacteristically bold move, he finds himself with the opportunity of a lifetime to become a salesman for this man's startup company, Someone. He's given the nickname Buck, and after a week of brutal training, he's able to turn his Buck persona into a confident and extremely successful salesman. Being the only person of color in the company, Buck finds himself wondering if there's a way to help other black people get ahead in the business world, but like everything in life, it won't come free. So that is like a synopsis. And this is the review that I wrote of it. Despite being nearly 400 pages, I flew through this book in less than six hours. I truly could not put it down. In addition to the plot being incredibly inventive and unique, the writing was so smooth, making it easy to say just one more chapter. As a white person who has never once felt endangered because of my skin color, this was an eye-opening look at not only the blatant racism of, that people of color experience, but the microaggressions that take place constantly. While Buck made a couple of questionable choices throughout the course of the book, it was clear that he was just doing what he felt he needed to do to survive as a black man in a world catered to white people. I know it's only the first week of January, but I feel like this will be one of my favorite books of the year. Yep, it's that good. So, I don't, I don't recall exactly if I ended up feeling like that was one of the best books of the year, but I think I did. I know that it was definitely on one of the top books. I just thought it was such a unique story. And as it stands, I honestly can't remember like details of the plot right now, but I'm looking forward to getting to it again and seeing what I think three years later. So let's just go ahead and get started. Hello, so I am just checking in. I am starting Black Buck. I I'm only 45 pages in so far, but I am enjoying it again. The book is written as like a how-to manual on like how to get in the top of a company that's very like white. And obviously we get the narrative throughout it, but like I feel like this is not really coming across the way I want to like explaining it. Basically the first part of the book is like an author's note, but it is from the main character if that makes sense so it, it's it is like in narrative format where I mean it's in the first person but it is the kind of thing where you're like oh right like we're supposed to be an outside observer it's like very broken the fourth wall all of that so I totally forgot about that I am excited to get back into it though because I really really love this book when it came out so I am super excited to be reading it again. Now I am starting a trip tomorrow. It's currently 8 o'clock and I have to wake up at 4 15 so I am probably going to go to bed relatively soon. That is why my hair is like curled and looks funny because I need my hair to like fall out of the curl a little bit before it looks socially acceptable. So that is what the night is for <laughs> to make my hair look normal. Um, I will be going tomorrow to Phoenix and then to San Diego. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do on my layover. It's pretty long. I think it's about 18 hours. I do have two friends who live out there. Both of them are flight attendants as well. And both of them are bookstagrammers. We actually met on Instagram and I've 
met them several times and they're treasures. So I'm hoping that we can find a way to meet up, but we will see. Otherwise, I'll probably just do some video planning and enjoy some coffee or something like that. Now, I was able to get the audiobook for Black Buck from the library because she's a thick girl. Like, I don't want to carry this on a three-day trip. So luckily, I was able to get that. I'm glad that I read it physically first because I really don't think I would have... It would have taken me a while to kind of like compute that the book is written in the way like breaking the fourth wall and all that. So I feel like that would have been much harder to remember, like to glean from just listening to the audiobook. So I feel good. We are back into the story and I am so excited to see what comes next. As always, I will try to film some stuff and make this a cute actual vlog, but it's hard to uh, remember sometimes. So we will see, and I will check back in when I've gotten a little further into Black Buck. Welcome to beautiful San Diego, California, where it is currently 57 degrees and raining. I picked the worst time, apparently, to lay over here because the weather is awful, and ugh, it's just heartbreaking, all of the flooding out in California. So if that is you, I, my heart goes out to you. So I had a very, very early morning. I got up around 4 and currently it is 1 p.m. West Coast time. So 4 p.m. East Coast time. So I've been awake for 12 hours. I'm pretty sleepy, but it was a pretty easy, fine day. I'm just waiting for one of my friends to finish working and then she's going to pick me up. And hopefully we are going to go book shopping and maybe get some food. So that will be a good time. And... I don't know. I haven't really read much of Black Buck because I was at work all day and it was the audiobook, but I will say this. I, I don't know if it's just, again, the difference between the audiobook and then reading it physically, but the narrator, some of the things that one of the characters is saying is way more aggressive in the audiobook than it was in my head. So, I mean, it was like this, you know, character, he works at someone and he's like the mean like douchey frat boy that's like kind of conditioning him to conditioning buck to like i don't know be okay with things and he's like super racist but you know he's just joking and he is super demeaning and degrading but like the narrator screams his lines and so i'm like in my head he was obviously a terrible person but less threatening that's less outright threatening anyways. So yeah, just something to note. But again, I haven't read too, too much yet. So we'll see uh, how that continues. I will probably have some more read tonight. But yeah, for now, I am going to go get ready to go out with my girlfriend. And we'll see where the day takes us. I've seen a lot of change. Been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago it is now seven o'clock and I just got back to my room after having dinner and going book shopping with my friend Sarah who is a bookstagrammer and you should follow her I will link her down below but we had such a nice time we went to two different bookstores so we went to verbatim books and we went to meet cute I forgot the name of it oh my gosh we had such a nice time there are some really cool bookshops in San Diego if you haven't checked them out, you definitely need to. Obviously, I put footage before this so you can see what, you know, 
is going on, but some great stuff. I ended up getting Revival by Stephen King. It seems like there is a lot of love for Stephen King at Verbatim Books because they have a huge mural on the side of the building, which I put in the clips before, and like just a huge section of all of his books. And so I felt like I couldn't leave there without getting a Stephen King book. I haven't read Revival, so I am pretty excited to read it. And this is one that I've definitely had interest in before, but I've just never picked up. So definitely we'll be reading that before too, too long. And then we went over to Meet Cute, which is such a cute little romance book store. They gave me a cute little bookmark and the back says romance readers never go to bed alone so cute i'm certainly not a romance reader generally but they had such cute stuff oh my gosh and like i do enjoy a romance every now and then i ended up getting this book called the bird this bird has flown by susanna hoff who apparently is the drummer of the bangles so that's kind of fun fact but I am really looking forward to reading this. I know it was an Aardvark book box pick a few months back and I had considered getting it, but I just didn't. And this is a paperback and which I love way more than hardcovers. It's also like really floppy, which is always a win for me. And it was only $9, so went for it. I also got some stickers over at Meet Cute. So I got this one that says, <laughs> May I please remind you, it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. So if you get that, then I love that for you. One of my favorite movies. I got this one that says all bodies are good bodies. And I got this one that says support strikers everywhere. And it's like a little matchbook, but it's for unions. It says there is no value without labor. So I am very excited. I'm going to put this on my work water bottle. And yeah, I just, I had a really, really fun day. I am exhausted, however, because it's 7 p.m. here. So it's 10 p.m. in Philly and I woke up at 4 a.m. And then I have to wake up at 4 a.m. again tomorrow. Luckily this time it's 4 a.m. San Diego time. So I'll get a little bit of extra sleep, but I am still pretty exhausted. So I am going to go shower and then I am going to lay down and probably fall asleep pretty soon. Tomorrow I go from San Diego to Charlotte and then Charlotte to Orlando. So I will see how much reading I can get done. I do think I have quite a while to sit in the airport in Charlotte tomorrow. So hopefully can catch up on Black Buck a little bit then. So Good night, and I will check in tomorrow. Okay, so it's actually been a few days since my last clip. I had a three-day trip, and now I'm on another three-day trip. So I'm a tired girl, and I haven't really done a ton of reading. So tomorrow, actually, I'm on a 32-hour layover currently in Jacksonville, Florida. So I actually don't have to work tomorrow. I just get the day in Jacksonville from tonight until two days from now, early in the morning. And my best friend McKenna is on this trip with me, so I am super excited. We are gonna go tomorrow, I think, to brunch, and then there's a bookstore that I really, really love here in Jacksonville. There's also like a mac and cheese place across the street, which like isn't my favorite food, but I do, I do love a pasta, and they have a really good extensive craft beer selection, so I hear, so. Definitely looking forward to that tomorrow. I also will try to finish Black Buck tomorrow since, you know, that's the point of this vlog. <laughs> but I will definitely uh, show some of the stuff that we end up doing here in Jacksonville. So I guess I, you know, can talk about where I am in Black Buck so far. So I think that I fully just like forgot the plot of this book. Like I remembered the general like aura of it the the kind of like general premise but the specific events that happen in the plot I like fully forgot so that's been kind of a fun ride for me because it feels like I'm reading it for the first time because I I sort of like had it in my head as this sort of like black devil wears Prada almost um and more like in the business world versus fashion but it's like so not that 
I mean, it has similar elements, but overall, like, not really that close. <laughs> so I have been definitely learning some stuff. I've also felt like there's just been some, like, really, really jaw-dropping moments that were... I don't remember, like I said, and this book is definitely, like, satire in the sense that it is, like, just over the top. Everything is made to be so much more extreme than it really is, but it's like, is this really that far off? So I definitely can appreciate that, but again, like, it's definitely, I don't know, just, like, more intense than I remember. So I really am liking it, and it, it is kind of funny, though, just having read this already and kind of feeling like it's a brand new story. So we'll see how I feel at the end. I really don't have much left, but I don't remember how it ends. So we will see. I will check in tomorrow and show you some of what we end up doing in Jacksonville. And I will see you then. <laughs> myself wondering, what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. No one's probably going to notice this, but I am in a different hotel room than I was in yesterday. So, You've seen the clips. I had a lovely morning having brunch with McKenna and then we went to the bookstore that we really like here in Jacksonville. And while we're in the bookstore browsing, we get a phone call from Crew Scheduling who says that they wanted to give another crew member my phone number because there's something going on at the hotel. And so they gave me his phone number. So I called him because I'm like, what's going on? And apparently our hotel caught on fire. So that was the whole thing. And he was t giving us updates and saying like, you know, there's really no reason for you to come back right now because we're all just standing outside. There's fire trucks and, you know, no one's allowed in. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but it was a whole thing because the power went out. There was no smoke alarm and it, there were no emergency lights on. So my poor crewmate had to find his own way out of the hotel and walk down seven flights of stairs in the dark with just his flashlight on his phone. And again, like he could have been in there while the place is up in flames because the alarm did not, did not work, did not go off. And I mean, that's so scary. And I'm just so grateful that he was okay and that everyone else was okay, but it took hours. So we are had to like wait and then go get our stuff from our rooms, which again, we had to climb up eight flights of stairs. My room was on the eighth floor, his was on the seventh, and then McKenna's was on the sixth. So I, I, got, to do, I got to do eight and carry it all back downstairs and then had to be on the phone with the company going back and forth like over and over again, trying to get ourselves arranged at a new hotel and trying to get transportation organized and it was absolutely chaos and not gonna lie kind of ruined my day i'm glad everyone was okay obviously that's the biggest priority um it wasn't like a crazy big fire they had been telling us the day before that they were having some issues with um, the water and so it seems like and they told us they were shutting the, the water off from midnight to 5 a.m yesterday or this morning i guess and then something happened. It didn't, like, what they were trying to fix did not get fixed. And water somehow went onto the main generator. And so it caught fire. And I don't know exactly. Um, because we, we missed the whole thing. We were out drinking mimosas and reading books. So I don't know, like, how bad it really, like, was smoke-wise. But that's so scary. There were several other crews there and crews from other airlines. <sighs> So they've got us sorted now at a different hotel, though it's been, this has been going on since 11 a.m. and it's now 6 p.m. And my van tomorrow morning is at 5 a.m., which means I need to wake up at 4. So I'm going to eat some dinner and go to bed. 
Unfortunately, with the power out, my refrigerator ruined my food that I had packed, so I had to order Uber Eats, which is annoying because I didn't really want to spend money on it, but I can't eat my soggy food that's been sitting out. And I was kind of pushing it, and it's like the last day that I probably could eat it before it got bad, so... What can you do? Got myself some Taco Bell. So needless to say, I haven't done any reading today and I will probably finish Black Buck tonight. I just like have a tiny bit left. So I will probably try to knock that out before bed and then you'll get my final thoughts. So hey, this was at least a more exciting vlog than the last one. I really should have been taking some video while this was all happening, but I didn't I didn't want the, the hotel to be in the video and everything for like safety and stuff. So man, it's been a day. So I will, uh, I'll check back in later and I hope everyone is having a better day than I am. Okay, we have made it to my final check-in for my Black Buck vlog. So overall, I would say that I would still rate, I don't know. This is either a 4.5 or a 5. I'm inclined to just keep it as a five because I did enjoy it so much the first time. And I really did enjoy it so much this time as well. I think I just was a little less engaged this time. And I don't know if that's partially because I just of like the way, you know, my actual life is going right now versus when I first read this in January, 2021, I was furloughed from my job. I was working a part-time retail job and I had a lot of time to do nothing. So, you know, I'm a lot busier now. So Maybe that has something to do with it. Who knows? I really did not remember the end of this book it one single bit. Like, I know that I said earlier how I didn't really remember much of the plot and like, I really did not. I had a vague sense of what it was, but like when it comes to the actual storyline, no clue. And definitely the end, I was just absolutely lost. I, I do enjoy the way this book ends because it's just very realistic and just I don't even want to say realistic because it's kind of like Scooby-Doo a little bit at the end just like who done it but it is the characters sort of um having consequences to their actions and I mean not necessarily in the way we want them to like the wrong people are the ones being punished so that's you know a thing but you do find that out at the beginning of the book or I should say in the middle of the book it's revealed. But I, um, yeah, I had a good time reading this and I'm glad I read it over again. And I would wholeheartedly recommend Black Book if you haven't read it yet. It is a really interesting and fun book written very satirical and funny. And if you're looking for something to add to your reading list, especially in Black History Month, this is a great book to pick up. So you should always be reading books from black authors, not just in February, but if you want to go the extra mile this month, I guess, uh, I don't know. Pick this up. It's great. So I would like to thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!